everybody, and welcome again to Z Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big every single time. It doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we've got you covered. So before we get into some Major League Baseball action for July 3rd, I want to ask you to join so you'll have access to the VIP Club section, which has all the tools to help you make your picks. So we're getting close to the MLB All-Star break, and things are really starting to heat up as teams really want to be playing well heading into that break. So let's take a look at the games for July the 3rd. We have a full slate of games. We will take a look at six of them. So let's get started. Kansas City, Detroit, Miami, Washington. The first game we want to look at is Milwaukee and Pittsburgh. In this NL Central showdown, the Pirates host the Brewers. Pittsburgh is average up and Milwaukee is average. You can see that over the last six games, Pittsburgh is two and there we go. There we go. They are two and four of their last six games, coming off of two straight wins. While Milwaukee is four and two over their last six games. Brandon Woodruff is scheduled to pitch for the Brewers. He is six and three with a four point four four ERA. And Jose Quintana is set to get the ball for the Pirates. He is one and four with a three point four three ERA. On the pitcher profit oscillator, you can see that uh, Woodruff has been a solid bet at plus two hundred twenty-two dollars. While Quintana is not a very good bet at minus twenty-nine dollars. On the power ranking indicator, you see Milwaukee on the upward trend, and they're up to plus 29. While the Pirates have dipped, they are only at plus 2. The score predictor has the Pirates by a 7 to 4 score with about 57% uh, level of confidence. If you look at the over under, you can see that Milwaukee has been involved in games over the line in each of their last six games, while Pittsburgh has been over the line in four out of their last six games. So expect a high scoring game in this one. The stability factor, you can see that um, Pittsburgh has been more consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status at plus 17, while Milwaukee is at plus 9. You can see that they have been up and down. They were as high as plus 11 back on May the 20th, so you can see that they have not been as very consistent with that regard since that time. In the end, I think that this is going to be a good game for the Pirates. They will win at home in a slugfest, so bet over the line. Tampa Bay, Toronto, Atlanta, Cincinnati, Yankees, Guardians. See, there's a full slate of games. And the next one we want to look at is the Texas Rangers and the New York Mets. The Rangers head to New York average down. They are 3-3 three and three over their last six, coming off of a 2-1 to one loss to Kansas City. While the Mets are ice cold down, they have lost their last three and four out of their last six. John Gray is scheduled to pitch for the Rangers. Uh, the Mets have not yet named their starter. You can see Gray for the season is 4-3 with a 3.89 ERA, but he has been a very good bet at plus $271. On the power ranking indicator, you see that Texas has been up and down. They are back up to plus 22 by the match. So you can see they were at plus 22 back on June of 26th, and they have dipped considerably just over the last few days to plus 6, all in part to their three-game losing streak. If you look at the over-under, you can see that the Mets have been involved in games over the line in four out of their last six, while the Rangers have been over the line in three out of their last six. The score predictor has Texas in a blowout 10 to 2, but take that with a grain of salt because the confidence in this prediction as of now is only 32%. If you look at the stability factor, are they consistently performing with regard to their favorite underdog status? While the Mets are, they are at plus 16. Look at the Rangers. They are minus one, and they have been inconsistent pretty much all season with regard to that. You can see this goes back to the beginning of the season. They have yet to be, uh, really, they have yet to be in the positive, well, slightly in the positive, but not much. So you can see that they have been very inconsistent with that regard. In the end, though, I like Texas to win this one on the road. The Mets have just been stumbling. And again, Texas is probably going to be an underdog, and since they've been inconsistent with that, why not go with them in an upset? And I like this to be in a game going over the line. Baltimore and Minnesota, we're not looking at that one. Um, Boston and Chicago Cubs, here should be a very good game. Boston enters the game average up, and they have won three, or four, excuse me, four of their last six, and one out of their last three. While the Cubs are burning hot, they're coming off of a two-game winning streak, both against Cincinnati, and they are four and two over their last six. Neither team has named their starting pitcher as of yet. In the power ranking indicator, Boston, downward trend. They were at plus 29, and now they're at plus 14. 
and the Cubs have increased from 11 up to 20. Over the last six games, you can see that Boston has been involved in games over the line in five out of the last six, and Chicago has been involved in games over the line in three out of the last six with one push. The score predictor has Boston by a 7-6 score with about 50% level of confidence in prediction, but if this holds true, this would be a higher scoring game going over the line, and I'm tending to lean towards that way as well. If you look at the volatility oscillator, let me take a look at that. See, um, the Cubs have not been extremely consistent, only at plus three. They've been up and down with regards to that. Their plus three is the highest that they have been pretty much all season. And the Red Sox are at plus eight. The way I see this game, I think this will be a high scoring affair. I like the Red Sox on the road. I buy about two or three runs and go over the line. Arizona, Colorado, Chicago, and San Francisco. The White Sox head to San Francisco. You notice that both teams have not been playing their best ball late. Both teams are ice cold down. You can see that the White Sox have lost four of their last six, as have the Giants. They are also two and four over their last six. Luis Giolotto is scheduled to pitch for the White Sox, and Anthony Descafani scheduled to pitch for the Giants. You can see Giolito has a record of four and four with a 5.19 ERA. But it's been a very, very poor bet at minus three hundred ninety-six dollars on the pitcher profit oscillator. Despite an 0-2 record and 9.95 ERA, Descofani has been a better bet at plus thirty-seven dollars. A score predictor has the White Sox in a low-scoring game, 4-0, with about 56% level of confidence. The power ranking indicator shows not very much of a surprise that the Giants right now are down near the bottom at plus four. And the White Sox are now at plus 13. Taking a quick glance at the volatility officer, you can see how up and down the Giants have been. The Giants were at plus 9 back on May 17th. You can see that they dipped and now they are at plus 4. Probably because they have been favorites and they have just haven't been playing as good ball over the last month or so. And that's the reason for their up and down trend. And the White Sox are at plus 7. The way I'm looking at this, though, is I think that the Giants will get back on track. I like them to win this game, but I would avoid the over-under bet in this one. The Padres and the Dodgers. Here's a classic NL West showdown. The Padres enter the contest ice cold down. They are just 2-4 and four over their last six games. While the Dodgers are burning hot, they have won their last two, and they are 3-3 three and three over their last six. Mackenzie Gore is scheduled to pitch for the Padres. Versus Clayton Kershaw for the Dodgers. If you look at the pitching matchup closer, you can see Gore is 4 and 3 with a 3.334 ERA, and he has been a very good bet at plus $228. And his away ERA is 3.34. And uh, Kershaw, good record, good ERA, 5 and 2, 2.94 ERA, but it's been a very poor bet, surprisingly, at minus $241. And his home ERA is at 3.38. The score predictor has the Dodgers an 8 nothing blowout with 63% level of confidence. The power rankings indicator shows that the Dodgers are at plus 21 on an upward trend. The Padres are on an upward trend as well. They are at plus 10. Has there been any inconsistencies with the favorite underdog status with the two teams? Not so much. You see the Dodgers at plus 17. Uh... Padres not as consistent, plus 8. The Padres were up as high as plus 10 back a little over a month ago, like a month and a half ago. So they have been a little bit more inconsistent with regards to that. I think the Dodgers have the better team. I don't see this to be much of a contest. I like the Dodgers in the game uh, by several runs, actually, but I would avoid the over-under. And finally, we wanted to look at the Philadelphia Phillies hosting the St. Louis Cardinals. The Phillies come into play average. They are coming off of a win, and they are 3-3 three three over the last six. And the Cardinals are average down. They are coming off of, if I can get this to, to work, there we go. They're coming off of a loss, and they are also 3-3 three three over their last six. Adam Wainwright is scheduled to pitch for the Cardinals versus Zach Wheeler for the Phillies. Wainwright is having a solid season at 6-5 with a 3.07 ERA, and he has been a very good bet at plus $242. And for the Phillies, Wheeler is 6-4 with a 2.89 ERA, but 
Over his last three starts, he's an 8.85 ERA and is a minus 150 on the pitcher profit outside. Regardless of the fact that the Phillies are, have a prediction by the score predictor of 9 to 3 win with 56% level of confidence, if you look at the over under, the Phillies have been involved in games over in three out of their last four, and the Cardinals in their last four. Could be a good idea to bet the over. Let's see what the power ranking indicator shows. On the power ranking indicator, you can see that the Phillies are at plus 19. The Cardinals were at plus 7 just a few days ago, and they've skyrocketed up to plus 21. The stability factor, the Phillies have not been consistent. Minus 1. They haven't been consistent all year. Just been a hard team to predict. While the Cardinals have been very consistent at plus 19. This is actually kind of makes it a difficult game to predict because Cardinals are consistent. They'll probably be a road underdog, which means that if they're consistent, they will lose. The Phillies have been inconsistent as a home favorite. So does that mean to bet Phillies as a home favorite because they're inconsistent? It's a really tough call on this one, but I really do think that it's going to be more for the Phillies at home. I give them this, the edge at home, but I would avoid the over underline on this one. So there you have it. Those are the games for July 3rd in Major League Baseball. Happy betting, and we will see you again next.